Right. Have you ever been so pissed off with something that you just have to let loose? I mean, I've said a lot since I've been here, but now it's got to a point where I need to get this off my chest. I need to tell you exactly what is going on. Now, I know there's been a, uh, a bit of a trend of superstars throwing out these sh so-called shoot promos. And now, yeah, you might, you might put this in that category again. But the thing is, or what I'm saying is so real right now. You know, the last person to talk out about everything was Malik Brown. And that's going to be a place to start straight away. Malik Brown, the biggest weapon you've got is your mouth. I mean, I've been in this company for a long time now, almost a year. I come out to almost a year now. And all I have seen is you run your mouth, and that's been about it. I mean, you call yourself superstar. You call yourself the the, the, the president of the violence party when you threaten a sub, when when you threaten somebody who's not even in the company, and secondly, you threaten his wife. Man, you are the big man. I mean, since I've been here, Malik Bar, I've not seen you. I don't think I've ever seen you actually in the ring. And if I did, I probably it was probably that bad a match. I forgot about it. I mean. This is what I hate about this company. This is what I hate about wrestling. Is people like you, Malik Brown. You want to open your mouth, say all this crap, really talk rubbish about every single person, every championship within this company, within within this industry. But yeah, you can't lay down your own actions. Yeah, I admit, I'm a talker. I have been a talker for a long time. I have always been the mouth of the wolf pack, and I've always been the mouth of companies and other places where I've been. And other teams I've been, I've always been... The mouth. I've always been the one that talks because I know what to say. But the thing is, the difference between me and Malik Brown is that I've got the bollocks to go and do something about it. Not stand up there and threaten with these blind threats that nothing comes of. I go out and I do something about it. So then, and this is why I get frustrated with people like this because whereas you've got somebody like Malik Brown who just wants to open his mouth and talk and talk and talk, he is getting the push. He is getting the, one of the biggest pushes in DCA. We've got superstars like myself who came into this company with a massive legacy behind them. For those who know my legacy John, as Jordan Collins, I have been so many things. I have been in so many companies, and in every company I have held gold. Every single time, every single company I have held some kind of gold, whether it's been tag team gold or singles gold. But the thing is, though, this is what frustrates me about this company, specifically about DCA as well. I'm going to talk about somebody like Malik Brown can openly talk and talk a lot of crap, get a two-part series on a YouTube channel, but yet again comes into the company, goes onto a commentary table and does nothing about it. Just talks and talks. And he gets the push and he gets the match at Revelations and he gets the, the ring time at the last episode. Yeah, fair enough. I give I give him too. Chris Knight came and kicked his ass, to be honest. And good on Chris Knight for doing that. But the thing is, it frustrates me because see, I came into this company with promises of championship gold. Yeah, I came in as a tag team. I brought my tag team partner, Harry, a former friend of mine. We came into this company and we was promised so much. We were promised the pushes. We were promised the titles. We were promised all the gold. We were given nothing. As soon as we got here, we didn't debut for at least another month until we actually got into the company. It took us a month to get a proper debut. But then we won, we won our match. Fantastic. We were on a winning streak. But still, we were not given the push. Still, we were not given the title shot that we had easily earned. This is why we went down the route of the blacklist. Now, I've got a lot to say about the blacklist because there's some frustrations I got with that as well. But, you know, I just want to talk about DCA at the moment. Now, DCA is a company that is going down. Reason being, there is no authority figure here. There's nobody here to run. There's nobody, nobody here to, to hold order. I think Envy is about as useless as a chocolate teapot. But this is the thing. There is nothing here. There's no commission, or commission as you'd say, in this company to make sure there's order because every week something breaks down. It's a breakdown. Look at the look at Gateway to Heaven. Look how many people got into into in interluded themselves into matches. People who weren't even on the con under contract, weren't even on the roster, and even these superstars who were from years back just turn up, distract another superstar, and bang something else went into the match. I don't think I've seen a clean finish in this company for quite some time. 
Reason being, because there is no control in this company. And it seems that if that although this company thrives on its lack of control, people who know what they're doing are pushed to the back, are sent away, and that person is me. Now, going back to the black, like I said, myself and Wolf, we joined the blacklist, blacklist again under the circumstance that we were told that we were going to be getting those shots a lot earlier than we should have. Well, not so much a lot earlier than we should have. We should have had those title shots a long time before we, we when we got into this company. But we got that title shot sooner than we would have if we stayed away from the blacklist. And just think, we got into the blacklist, we were having Wolf in the blacklist, and we won the tag team championships. And we were a dominant tag team, but then Wolf lost those tag team titles. And guess what happens? We're pushed towards the back yet again. So you think it's not it's not just the fact that we lost the titles, it's the fact that we didn't get the push, and I knew that I was being held back. That is the main reason the Wolf Pack broke up. You know, I'm the I'm the person who broke that off, knowing that I was better than Harry Wolf. I have always been better than Harry Wolf. You know, every company I've been in, I have brought Harry Wolf with me. And every time we have thrived as a team. But now it's time for me to go on. I've talked about this. Now, I've, I've talked about this previously before. I talked about the reason why the Wolf Pack broke up. So I don't need to go into that again. Just know that the Wolf Pack is dead and that is never, ever going to come back. But this is the thing. We're going to talk about the blacklist. And then there's a perfect example of what I mean. Now, I know with, with the blacklist and the aim in this is to take over virtual wrestling to so take over this company take over dca ccl and any other company that we are involved with but this the thing the person at the helm of that shazine freer is about as useless as i don't know it's, it's about as useless as a frying pan without a handle i mean again we're talking about another person who all she does is talk and talk and talk and this is what this is what this is what makes me funny because Shazim Freya, you know, has this whole thing that she wants to be in charge. She would be about as useless as in charge as 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 as, as I don't know as a, as as a delinquent who hasn't got a fucking clue what they're doing in this company. She'd be like she'd be probably like Dixie Carter who hasn't got a clue about wrestling but likes the money side of things. I mean, I can't sit back any longer. You know, because I, I, I want to talk about so many people. You know, there's so many people in this company that are given the push who don't deserve it, who are actually probably passed their sell-by date. Great example, the great D. There's nothing great about that. Yeah, when he came here, he was a big superstar. Everyone wanted to know what the great D was. He calls himself greatness. I'm calling himself lame. I mean, there's nothing great about the great D. He's been about as successful in this company as, well, I don't know, us, for example, reason being because he's no good. But the thing is, though, we the wolf myself, not so much the wolf part, just myself, have been here for so long. For so long, I've pushed and pushed and pushed to get myself out there, to get myself known, to get myself in the main event. And what's happened? Absolutely nothing. Because we've got people like TJ Kennedy walking around the Celestial Champion. I mean, this guy came out of nowhere. Oh, by the way, TJ. Johnny Gargano rung. He wants his he wants his gimmick back. He wants his, he wants his tight his trunks back. I know you took them from a, at a a wrestle fest, but he wants them back. But this, is, this is the thing. You've got people like T.J. Kennedy who comes in out of nowhere, out, out out of nowhere. This guy is not known. This is his first wrestling company, his first title shot, and bang, DCA give him the title shot straight away. And look what he does. He's walking around now with that celestial title. He's made that title back as as legit as the ECW World Heavyweight Championship when the WWE took it over. It, is, it meant nothing. And this is what frustrates me with DCA. You know, it seems everybody who has a little bit of hype is put, it, it isn't put enough. Sorry, people who are hype don't get the push they deserve. I mean, I have been here for a long time. And oh, since I've been here, all I've had is two major matches. Yeah, we had our DCA, our DCA Tag Team Titles matches and the Gateway to Heaven. By the way, I was screwed out of and Zach Stone, you got lucky. And this is, what, this is what I mean. The Gateway to Heaven match is another perfect example of how DCA like to screw the good guys. Like, so it's a perfect example of how DCA like to screw the guys like myself. The finish of that match, 
three, two of the superstars in that match were taken out. And where was I? I was told to lay down at the side and let Zack Stone climb that ladder so he could go walk away and he could, he could walk out with that title. He could walk out with the money in the bank and then cash it in and become the world champion. Or whatever he's going to do, but it doesn't make a difference to me. The thing is, though, we've got so many false champions in this company. It is unreal. TJ Kennedy is a perfect example. Yeah, this guy's come up from nowhere. And the, he's the, the big underdog. And he's come up and walking around the celestial title. He will always be the underdog, as they call it. And I, I know how much people like the underdog win. Look at James, Al James Ellsworth now on, on WWE. This, and this is what I mean. You know, we've got a, a fake championship, like a fake champion like TJ Kennedy. And we've got an even bigger fake champion in our WDC, DCA world champion that is Casey Gordon. <laughs> now, I know this will probably get me in a hell of a lot of trouble. But if it wasn't for certain people within this company, like myself, Casey Gordon would not have that title around his waist. The thing is, though, Shazine clangs onto that guy like he has been he is the best thing to enter this company he's been the best thing to grace that title here in dca but this is what frustrates me he would be about as successful as oh, I, 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 I can't even think to be honest i'm just so frustrated with not being given the shot and the thing is though this is talks about the frustration it has been almost a month and if you've watched episodes I have not been on one match card. And now we come to DCA's biggest event ever, Revelations, the final act. And guess who's not on the match card? Yours truly. I mean, the greatest acquisition that DCA has ever had is not even on the match card. Not even on the pre-show. I had to pay to get this camera time. Because DCA will not give that. Because DCA will not allow me the time like I want. I've had to pay for this time. And believe me. They get the assets. I didn't want an interview. I wanted nothing. I just wanted myself and that camera because I am frustrated. But I'm going to go back to Casey Gordon. Now, Casey Gordon has been the champion here for quite some time now. But the only reason he's the champion is because of the guys like me who would, who would blindly went along and helped the blacklist and helped him walk away with that title. So in a sense, that title belongs to us all. That title, the thing is, that title is tarnished because I don't think he's won a fair match since he's had that belt around his waist. And that's what frustrates me. Whereas Shazin will push a superstar like Casey Gordon. And then, this is what, uh, not going to happen. This is what will happen here in the blacklist. As soon as Casey Gordon loses that title, Shazin will just drop off that guy and move on to the next person. And believe me, Shazin Freya, that person will not be me. I ain't going to still be associated with the blacklist because I know this is a revolution. This is a, this, this is a group of wrestlers who will take this company and will take it to another level. Whether you were part of that company or not is another question. But I know that we have a group of wrestlers in this, in this faction that will take this company to the next level. But this is what I'm saying. If Casey Gordon didn't have that title, how successful would the blacklist be? But the thing is, though, you're saying, oh, the Blacklist wouldn't be successful without the title. The, reason, the only reason that the Blacklist has been so successful is because of superstars like me. You know, we've got the motor mouth Shazim Freer th 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 throwing orders at us to do this, do that, and we blindly go ahead and do that. But my eyes have been opened, and I've seen so much that I want to get off my chest. And this is what this is all about, is getting this off my chest. So this is the thing, we are now at Revelations, and like I said, I am not even on the match card. I mean, how does that make sense? You know, I got a push, I was told to lay down. I was told to lay down if I want to keep my job here. I did that. I, I was told to lay down with the blacklist, so I let a Zach Stone were up that ladder and walk away with that champion, with that, with that, thing, with that briefcase for his title shot. But here's the thing, we are now at Revelations, the final act. And like I say, I am not even on the match card. That doesn't make sense to me. So this is the thing, DCA, and this is the thing, the blacklist. Tonight is the final act. And believe me, my final act will be something you will not expect. And the face of this company will change. And the reason the face of this company will change is because of me. And I will get the recognition that I deserve. You see, DCA, 
I'm no longer be throwing out the catchphrases because this is real. And the face, and like I said, the face of DCA changes tonight. The route this company goes changes tonight at Revelations. And the reason that happens will be because of me. So make sure you are ready. Blacklist, open your eyes, and DCA. Make sure you're ready because you will, what you see, what will happen, you will not expect.